Hello guys, um, I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna talk about uh, the Black Hebrew Israelites. Now, the Black Hebrew Israelites uh, say that they are the children of Israel, the real children of Israel, and a lot of them say that they're the only ones that are gonna inherit the kingdom of God. That um, the kingdom of God is for the black man and it's not for the white man, and uh, the white man is gonna be a slave. In the kingdom uh, some of them say the white man are devils and um, so I'm just gonna try and see if the Bible supports this and they say that um, uh, between the brothers that is uh, uh, Jacob and Esau the children of Isaac and uh, grandchildren of Abraham Esau was um, uh, is a white man and Isaac I mean uh, and Jacob is the black man so uh, I'm just gonna Go to the word and uh, show you a couple of verses and let you make the decision for yourself. So, uh, we're going to start with Hosea. In Hosea, uh, Hosea 12, 10, says this. I have spoken by the prophets. I have multiplied visions. I have used symbols through the witness of the prophets. Now, the reason I use, uh, I, I give you, I start with that is to show you that in the Bible, sometimes God um, speaks. Everything is not literal, okay? So sometimes you use likenesses, uh, resemblances, images, parables. All of that is to communicate, okay? So when you're reading the Bible, you've got to understand that some things are literal. Some things are, are, are parables. Some things are an image. Some things are resemblance. It's just a way of communicating, okay? So um, if we get into it. Uh, we're going to turn now to Genesis 25 and 26. This is the story of um, uh, the birth of uh, uh, Esau and his brother, Jacob. And he says, and 25 says, after, so after, okay, I'm going to start 24. So when the days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there was twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like, a hairy garment all over so they called his name Esau the first thing I want you to see there is there's two parts to 25 so the first part I see I see and the first came out red that to me sounds like a description okay and the second part he was like a hairy garment all over that to me sounds like a simile okay he was like comparison okay he's he he looked like a hairy garment so the first part is a description the second part is a simile so let's focus on the description he was red that word red okay that word red if we go to strong's concordance uh, is uh, on strong is number 132 and uh, this is how it's um is 132 on, on the strongs and uh, you say a domini okay and uh, it means reddish of hair or complexion okay red ruddy so he was reddish of hair or, or complexion okay that's what he looked like and I'll show you back again there that he was red that's a description of, of, of um, what he looked like all right okay so if we go to another one so that's Esau that they say Esau is a white man, okay? You don't get much of a description of Jacob. Uh, you just get what he did. You don't really get much of a description of who he looked like. So he says, after his brother came out, his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was, Jacob, was called Jacob. So you don't actually, um, whether he looked different from his brother, you don't get to, to really see. Just when they're older, you get a bit of a description of their characters, dif difference in their characters. But as far as description of what he physically looked like, you only get that Esau was red. And remember, like I said, the black Hebrew Israelites say that Esau is a white man. So the white man is red, okay? No problem so far. I'm sure they they would have no problem with me saying that. I think they that's what they think. So let's go to 1 Samuel 15, 20, 23. I mean 15, sorry. And I, I'm actually not even going to read 15. I'm going to read 16. So 1 Samuel 16. Uh, this is talking about David. This is where David comes to be anointed. And remember, David is um, a great king for Israel. Okay? 
So if the Israel, Hebrew Israel, black Hebrew Israelites are saying that um, the kingdom is, is, is for the black people, then David has to be black, doesn't he? Because he's a great king. He has to be black. You can't, this can't be like um, a, a, a black thing, okay, where the black people are the chosen people and the white people are not, and then the greatest king is white. Okay, so let's see a description of David. So if we read from 16, 12. So this is Samuel. I'm going to read that from 12, 11, actually, so you can get a little bit of the context. And Samuel said to Jesse, Jesse is David's father, all the, are all the young men here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. Okay, so Samuel has gone to anoint one of Jesse's sons, and uh, all of his sons has passed through, and Samuel hasn't seen the one who's supposed to anoint. And so he asked, is there, is there any more? And he says, there's one more, the youngest, who's looking after the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send him and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes. So they go and bring him. So he sent and brought him in. Now this is what David looked like. Now he was ruddy. That's the same word used to describe Esau's redness. He was ruddy with bright eyes and was good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for he is the one. Again, if you look at this, this is a physical description. He is ruddy, bright eyes, good looking. Physical description. So David is red, same as Esau. Problems? Black Hebrew Israelites, I'm seeing big problems because your David is, according to uh, what you're saying, looks more like Esau. Looks like Esau. So David is a white man then. All right, if you go to 17, 1 Shammu 17, uh, this is the story of David and Goliath. Okay, and this is when, Dave, when Goliath sees David. Okay, and this is what he says. Uh, so the Philistine, that is Goliath, came and began drawing near David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. Okay, so Goliath is going to uh, uh, meet David and he's the, the guy who's bearing his shield is going before him. And when the Philistine looked, and I highlight looked and saw, he looked and saw David. Okay, so this is what his eyes are seeing. He disdained him. Why did he disdain him? For he was only a youth. So he's looking at him, he's seeing a youth, ruddy, red, and good looking. And that's a contrast to what he himself was in here. Yeah. So David, if you look at number uh, chapter 4, your, his description is, I mean Goliath, his description is given here yeah, as his height was six cubits and span. So compare, he's comparing himself, he's looking, look at me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a warrior. And look at this little boy, he's a youth, he's red, and he's good looking. So again, going back to Hosea, this to me sounds like a direct description of what David looks like. And the same word ruddy, yeah, the same word ruddy is the same word that we saw earlier on uh, here, 132. This word here, Adomni. Okay, meaning reddish of hair or complexion. So if David had red hair or complexion, I think you're going to struggle to say that he's black. Personally. Okay. So let's go to some other verses that use, uh, 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 you know, kind of disc physical descriptions. Okay. So let's go to. And you can, uh, you can turn with your own Bibles and just take these verses and kind of, you know, look through it yourself. We we'll we'll go to Songs of Solomon. Now, if you keep Hosea in mind, what we said about Hosea, and we see this, this is a poem, okay? And we get to uh, uh, Songs of Solomon 5.10. It says, My beloved is white and ruddy. This is a Shulamite um, describing her beloved. So she says, He's white and ruddy, chief among ten thousands. His head is like finest gold. His locks are wavy and black as a raven. His eyes, like, his eyes are like doves by rivers of waters washed with milk and filthy set. She goes on and on and on. Now, here, this is very interesting because I personally think this is a poem. So you could argue it's, um, it's more poetic than a literal description than like we've seen before. But nonetheless, uh, let's just look at that white, what white 
the ruddy we know but let's look at the word white okay that's strong's uh, 6703 strong 6703 i'm so sorry camera is moving around um strong 67 no, this is a word white it's the word used for the for white zack okay and it's, it's been used as dazzling i.e sunny bright evident white clear plainly dry so that's the different ways it's been used okay so you're describing someone and you're saying you're describing them either as clear plainly or white or dry sunny bright dazzling okay so you got uh you got difficulty here again uh, because even if you say that this is just poetic this is not um, a literal description then you're gonna have to say that poetically poetically these people are looking at what's beautiful and they're saying to be beautiful is to be white and ruddy according to their culture okay so if you're telling me that the the, the israelites were black black people then you got a problem because i'm a black person and um where i'm from uh most people i'm not saying this is a, a complete thing but most people think you know dark women are beautiful and you say dark the darker the berry the sweeter the juice stuff like that you see because that's a cultural thing is what what what, uh, what we see as beautiful and what, what they see as beautiful so here my contention is it's very difficult to convince me that um uh if these guys were, were black and if if being black is such a big deal like the what these hebrew israelites make it that they're going to be using descriptions of beauty as white and ruddy okay and i will even contrast that with the songs of solomon uh, one five where one five yeah where the shulamite now is described was describing herself yeah and she says i am dark but lovely O daughters of jerusalem like the, the like the tents of Kedar, like the curtain of Solomon. Do not do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. I think that's very important, and because a lot of people take this to think she's talking. She's saying when she says I'm dark, they think she's saying I'm black, but I don't think so. She says I'm tanned. So basically, uh, I'm a I'm a white person who's been out in the sun and I'm tanned. Yeah, my mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyards I have not kept. Now. You can see that um, culturally, from here, culturally, you can see that for them, beauty was almost paleness, paleness and redness. You know, it's like in Victorian times in England, they used to um, literally put on white in themselves, put on like makeup to make them look even whiter, okay? Because I was considered beautiful to be pale, okay? And these guys here, culturally, is considered beautiful to, to be pale. Okay, it's not like today where over here, if you got a tan, uh, it's almost exotic. It's almost it's almost says that you know I travel, I go to other countries, I have money to travel and go on holidays, get a sun tan, do you know what I mean? But in those days, if you worked if you worked outside, right, you were more like a, a, a peasant. You know, you worked in the field, so you got tanned. So having a tan wasn't considered beautiful. Do you see what I mean? But she's not saying I'm a black person. She's saying I'm dark. I'm tanned. Okay. For me, this is more evidence that these people are white, not black. The word, uh, the word used there. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna go into that. I'm gonna go to lamentation. Uh, I remember, I'm just um, highlighting these. You take your time and you know, look at these things for yourself because some people are believing and holding on to some very dangerous ideologies. When you're saying that, oh white people do not inherit the kingdom and stuff like that and i'm just thinking okay are you reading the same bible that the rest of us are reading you know what i mean anyway lamentations 4 7. okay this is talking about the degradation of um zion yeah and this is after the, this is when they've been taken captive and then um, uh, listen listen to what they say her nazarite that is zion's nazarite and some people say that what the Nazarites should really be translated princes, which I tend to agree with. Um, and he says, so her Nazarites were brighter than snow. Okay, so this is before, okay? They were brighter than snow. They were whiter than milk. And they were more ruddy.
body in body than rubies like sapphire in their appearances now after now they've they've sinned and they've been taken captive yeah now look their appearance is blacker than soot they are they go unrecognized in the streets their skin clings to their bodies it's dry as wood so this is just showing you the difference between uh, when, a, when, a, when, a, when a when a people are obedient and when they're disobedient you know he's talking about how how good you guys look before how blessed you are now look you know uh, you go in the streets unrecognized that is a prince is walking in the streets and you can't tell him apart from a normal person you know what i mean right and the word used there for uh, 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 brighter or whiter uh, uh, is um 21 21, 2141. If you can find it, 2141. 2141. That is Zak. Zawak. Zakak. It means to be transparent, parent, clean, to be clean. Okay. Make clean, be pure. Okay? So these were what they were before and what they are now. But the whole point of all of this is to ask you whether you think. According to the few verses we've read, and I'm sure you're going to spend time to read them yourself, whether you think that the Bible makes as much of a of a deal about skin color as much as the he the black Hebrew Israelites are making, to the point that they're saying that white people are devils, white people are not going to heaven, white people are going to be slaves uh, to them, and uh, you know God is black. They're literally saying God is racist, really. You know what I mean? So I I just say that um, it behooves you to look. To the word yourself and just remember that um, your soul okay this is the important part your soul is your i don't want to say your responsibility but it is if you get what i mean it's your responsibility to make sure that your soul ends up in the right place okay because you follow some people follow a movement and be wrong with them you're in trouble so don't don't be part of a of, of 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 a group don't just listen to anyone just get the bible open it yourself read it make sure what you what you believe is true because if it's not my friend i don't know what to tell you this is dangerous stuff okay okay and be careful the things that you you ascribe to god i don't understand how someone sanely can read the bible and ascribe racism and hate and murder to god to say that God hates people that he made. I understand that racism has, has, has been very painful to us black people, has made us suffer and all that, and you know, there's pain and all that, but God God has to be true and all men all men liars. Okay, just because some people are evil doesn't make God evil. You know? And the Bible says, By their fruits you shall know them. So think of yourself, think for yourself and ask yourself. The fruits of this Hebrew Israelites movement is it love, is it peace, is it is it unity, or is it hate, is it is it is it revenge, bitterness, is it godly? Think for yourself, read the verses, and I wish you all the best and may God bless you. Amen.